my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The scripture for today is from Mark chapter 1, verse 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate lo locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Do you have any stereotypes? Many people say that they don't have a stereotype because they cannot realize that they have a stereotype. I think every human being has a stereotype and stereotypes create many conflicts in society. It is pretty impressive what Wikipedia talks about stereotypes. In social psychology, a stereotype is an overgeneralized belief about a particular category of people. It is an expectation that people might have about every person of a particular group. The type of expectation can vary. It can be, for example, an expectation about the group's personality, preference, appearance, or ability. Stereotypes are sometimes overgeneralized, inaccurate, and resistant to new information. A significant example is a racism. Since we have a fixed image of each race, racism exists. There was the a shameful news coming from Washington, D.C. last Wednesday that the riots tried to capture the Capitol. They proclaimed that Trump won the election and requested to change the result. It showed us a dangerous example of the stereotype. On the day, I saw many posts about how the police treated the Capitol riots and the black people differently. I found a sad post from our district superintendent's post on Facebook. It says that this is sad but true. Black folks would have been killed for these actions. When I saw this post, I agreed with her and felt ashamed. These different treatments toward two different people show us how the stereotype controls people's thought and actions. I had another story about a stereotype in my experience when I went to Israel as a Holy Land class. During the Holy Land trip, one of the popular spots was the Jordan River for Jesus' baptism. Since it was an important spot for Jesus, Christians loved to visit and to do remembering their baptism in the Jordan River. Why do Christians love this place? 
Bible today, the scripture talked about Jesus' baptism. It was one of the events Jesus did before the start of his ministry officially. John the Baptist proclaimed to confess people's sinfulness and baptize people to get cleansed from their sins. Although Jesus didn't need to get baptized because he had no sin, Jesus came to John the Baptist to receive baptism. So John asked Jesus why he would like to get baptized. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 14, Jesus answered that, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus would redeem all sinners at the cross, and it was the righteousness of God. Jesus' baptism was also a time for people to know who Jesus was. When Jesus described what happened after Jesus received the baptism and says that in verse 10 through 11, it says, And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the scripture descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son beloved. With you I am well pleased. In front of the people around the Jordan River, God confirmed that Jesus was the Son of God. At that time, the word the Son of God was used as the same meaning of Messiah. Therefore, God confirmed that Jesus was not only the Son of God, but also the Messiah for the people. For this reason, Christians loved the Jordan River baptismal site. From Israel, people visited Kesar of Yel Yahud, and El Megatas was the baptismal site from Jordan. Although it is not sure where was the location of the Jesus' baptism, Israel and Jordan insisted their site was the right location of Jesus' baptism. People came to the site and had time to remembering their baptism at the meaningful place of Jesus' baptism. Since each site of Jesus' baptism was arranged by each country for their tourism without any evidence, people just visited these sites as Jesus' baptism. During my Holy Land tour, my guide Dr. Luker raised another theory about the place of Jesus' baptism. He mentioned that Bethsaida might be the place of Jesus' baptism because Jesus became popular on the north side of the Sea of Galilee right after Jesus' baptism. Since both uh, baptismal sites were too far from the north side of the Sea of Galilee, he thought he was baptized in Bethsaida. Many of Jesus' disciples were also from the northern side of the Sea of Galilee, such as Capernaum, Bethsaida, and Chorazim. Bethsaida was a reasonable possibility as a site of Jesus' baptism. And Dr. Luker also mentioned that other scholars didn't want to talk about that issue because they already fixed the baptismal site. So they didn't want to change it due to their stereotype. Jesus' baptism was an essential story because Jesus got confirmed as a son of God and the Messiah and told us what Jesus' ministry would be. It gave us a meaningful reminder of the beginning of the new year. The story was powerful to us. However, I also like to mention our stereotypes. Many Christians have stereotypes in them. 
even though Jesus redeemed us, made us a new creature, we are still living with many stereotypes. What if Jesus had a stereotype about children as Jews treated kids as none? What if Jesus had a stereotype about women in Jesus' culture? What if Paul had a stereotype about Gentile? We need to think about what kinds of stereotypes we have. What are your stereotypes about people of color, women, kids, homeless, or poor people? If we have a stereotype, it is hard to have an awakening message from God because we already have our own answer and thoughts. As we are beginning of the new year, I hope everyone try to remove your stereotype by one by one, by to see all peoples equal as Jesus did. Let's pray. God, thank you for your message today. Through your baptism, we have a reminder that you are the Son of God and the Messiah who saved us from our sinfulness. Let us be thankful for what you've done in our lives. We also pray that we would like to be like Jesus in 2021. As Jesus had no stereotype about all human beings, we would like to try to learn from you. Let us think about what kind of stereotypes we have. Let us try to remove our stereotypes as much as possible in this new year. We love you. We praise your name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.